another week the Lord has given us, and let's uh, bow in prayer as we give him all the praise. Our Father and eternal God, we come before the throne of grace, thanking you and praising you for who you are, an all-loving, all-caring, all-knowing God. Uh, you know our hearts, you know our minds, and just uh, pray your blessing on each one that come out here today, Lord, and uh, those that couldn't come for one reason or another, we just lift them up before you, and uh, we do pray for any unspoken prayer requests, Lord, to lift them up before the throne of grace, and guide and direct us, and Help us to be a light. Others might see Christ in and through us. And, and we just thank you and praise you for this day, uh, Mother's Day. We give praise and honor to our mothers, and uh, but uh, most of all, giving praise and honor to you. Uh, and we just want to thank you. And we do pray for uh, Ukraine. We pray for those uh, uh, refugees, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that that uh, war might be stopped soon. And we just uh, thank you and praise you. You have a purpose in everything, and sometimes we don't understand it. So uh, be as Pastor Tim as he brings the message and open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to, to the message. That we might take it and use it for your honor and your glory. And we'll give you all the praise in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand and open the hymnal to 83, There's Something About That Name. Mother's Day to each of our mothers here this morning. We'll have a time for that just in a few minutes here, or a few minute, a minute, not a few minute, a minute. I just want to cover just a few things that you can follow along this morning in your bulletin for what's going on, what's coming up, and just a lot of things to cover quickly. Um, first of all, the two inserts you have in there, the potluck is next Sunday. Next Sunday is the luncheon. Now, now, let me explain this, because some people have been talking to me, and they're a little confused on it. Everyone's to bring a main dish, okay? And one of a side or one of a dessert. So you're bringing two things that day, okay? So everyone's bringing a main dish, and you have a choice of either a side or dessert, okay? So um, that's how that's working, okay? So, and then uh, speaking of that, if... I don't know if anybody else signed up, but I know we had two signed up. If there's one more that wants to be able to help out in the kitchen uh, during that, it's just a matter of you know putting food in the refrigerator if it's cold, putting food in the oven if it's warm, that kind of thing. I know we have two people already in the kitchen, and that might be enough, but um, a third, uh, if somebody wants to help in there uh, for that. We'll need that each month anyway. But uh, So that's next Sunday. Next Sunday is that time. It's, and again, it's just, a, it's just a family, church family fellowship following the morning service, okay? So just a time to get together. You also have your information for church records there. That is to help us with the phone directory that we're going to be working on here the next month or two. And then um, also that is if you look in your bulletin, you can see birthdays, anniversaries, that kind of stuff in there. That's how we get that as well too. And that also we have a church card ministry 
So, um, and, and in addition to that, if you want to be a part of the church card ministry, um, I know there are a few people involved in the church card ministry, and that is they write birthday cards and anniversary cards and get well cards and all of that, and the more people in that, the better. Um, so if, you're, if, if you want to find a ministry to be involved in, that's a great one. Uh, let me know, and we can get you connected into that. But so you would get those birthday cards, anniversary cards, those things from the church. And so that's what the information for church record is as well there, in there as well, too. Um, because of Mother's Day today, there's no evening service tonight. No evening service tonight, so make sure you make note of that. No, no Sunday night service um, for that. Uh, Wednesday night will pick up as normal, 6.30, or 6 o'clock is the fellowship refreshment time. And then 6.30 is the Bible study prayer time. And the same with uh, youth group as well, too. And so make sure you make note of those things. On the back of your bulletin, let me just go over those things real quick. You have a few things up top. Ministry need. I already mentioned the help in the potluck, or for the potluck uh, fellowship. Sharing and caring is uh, May 17th. So that's coming up here. Not this Tuesday, but the following, I believe that is. And uh, they're having stuffed chicken and scalloped potatoes and all of that great lunch. West Cowan Historical Society will be here talking about the old schoolhouses in West Cowan Township. You are to bring a dessert and a smile, they added in here, okay, for the special fellowship. All right, so that's our seniors ministry there. That is that Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock, so make sure you make note of that for the sharing and caring. Uh, there's a sign-up in the bulletin board. There's a bunch of sign-ups in the foyer. The one is the potluck one I told you about. The, another one there is special music night, special music night. Uh, I had the wrong date on there. I forgot it was Memorial Day weekend, and so we don't have church in the evening that night. So May 22nd, May 22nd is special music night. So if anybody has any talents of singing or playing an instrument and wants to be a part of, of that evening, uh, we'd love to have you be a part. And then even if you don't want to sing or if you feel like you can't sing or something like that and you just want to come and hear other people um, how the Lord has blessed them uh, we'd love to have you join us that night as well too so that's May 22nd that's a Sunday night service there for special music there's a sign up out in the bulletin board for that so you can see that as well um, and then the other sign up I mentioned I gave it a all call this past week for the Varga family for helping with meals so if you're interested in helping uh, with a meal, they have no restrictions as far as that goes. And um, there is, I think, four of them. It's, it's uh, Tracy and Zoltan, their son, and then they have like an aunt coming just to kind of help them out for the next two months. And so we're helping with meals this week and the following week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, I know Monday's taken... Uh, already tomorrow's already covered Wednesday might be covered I don't know I haven't checked it since then but if you go out and if you're interested in helping with a meal even if you want to say they're all filled and you said man I really want to help out you could continue on the following you know the following Monday just let me know and I'll let her know so we want to help out in that way too and so um, and then to just put your post put your name and an idea of what you're bringing that way we don't have six spaghettis coming to them six days straight or something like that okay so People can see what the other ones in front of them are bringing. So think of that here as well. Also, out in the foyer is because uh, we have elections coming up, local elections and all that for lieutenant governor, governor, and a few other things, Senate as well. And um, out in the foyer, um, you have a paper that's going to at least help with governor. Um, Gwen and Dave Alexander put that together. And so to at least help you have an understanding of maybe who to vote for for governor out in the foyer is um, a 8 by 14 sheet that you can take home that you can read to see where everybody stands on certain issues and what they oppose, what they're for, all of that kind of stuff. And so make sure you grab that today. That is not this Tuesday. I think that's the following Tuesday is the, is the election. So it just helps you have a better idea for that. Okay, so make sure you check that out out there on the foyer too. The last thing is out in the foyer is archery camp. Archery camp is next month. It's June 21st, 22nd, 23rd. We have a registration already out on our Facebook page and we have 20 some kids already signed up for it. But um, there's a registration out on the table for those that want to. It's ages seven to 13. If they're six and able to pull back a bow, we'll, we'll love to have them. We just say seven because usually that's the 
that's the age group of where they're able to do that. But um, so the registrations are out there. You can register all the way up to the time of the camp. The only thing I will say is as, as far as being able to get an archery camp shirt, you have to register by the 4th of June. June 4th is the deadline to get a shirt. Even if you register after that, you're still able to participate. We just can't promise you a camp shirt because we have to order them. Okay, so that's archery camp out there in the foyer as well. So you'll see all of those on that prayer table that we have, all the prayers uh, for the different, um, uh, those in authority for each state. That's out there too. So you'll see there, you can pick and choose on there. Anything you want to take home and grab, uh, you can do that as well. So I believe that's, that's all the things that I have to cover. You do have uh, Days of Praise, I think. The days of Praise are here. So you can check those out in the foyer. That's a devotional similar to uh, the Daily Bread. And so make sure you make note of that as well. So those are the announcements that we have. I want to go right into our celebration of Mother's Day today. And, um, you know, today being Mother's Day, we certainly want to honor, honor our mothers as well. And so um, if I could just have just, just our mothers stand, just briefly, if you're, if you're a mother here today, would you please stand? No mothers in here? Okay, there they go. There they go, I was going to say. All right. Thank you. You can be seated. So we, 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 you know, we, we thank you from the very bottom of our heart. And God has um, blessed everyone in this room, but blessed you in order to have kids and, and all of that as well. And so we are so grateful for, for that uh, here today. And I know I'm grateful for my own mom and my, my wife as well, too, and my mother-in-law, who's not here today, too. So I know three of the best moms in the world. And, um, and all of you would say the same for your moms as well, too. And so, but we do thank you very much today for that. We'll have uh, a message that will kind of go with Mother's Day, but you know how I am. Uh, we're also going to hit everyone here today. So in addition to that, as we thank and, and praise moms uh, for all that you give and all that you do, and we'll hit more on that in the message this morning, but also we... As I always say, we always are near to our hearts are those who aren't able to have children, who are struggling to have children. And then on that list goes as well uh, those that obviously um, children have passed on uh, or your mother has passed on. And so this day we understand, I don't understand, I'm not in your shoes, but we have an understanding of where you're at in the way of that this day is not great for everyone. And so this is a difficult day. In fact, there are uh, probably people here to, not here today because of this day. And so um, I try to do my best to, to honor all of you and to, and to let you know that as your pastor, all of you are on my heart today. And um, I don't know what those that this day is most difficult uh, going through is today. And, but I, I want you to know those that have had miscarriages and those that aren't able to have kids and those that whose, whose uh, ch children have passed on and, and on the list, single, single moms today, all of those things, you are near to my heart. And, um, you know, and we think of you today too. And uh, so um, the message is, is for you also today. It's for everybody. Father's in here too. Grandparents in here too. This message, and I'm, I'm not going to change anything that I normally do. We're going to give you the God of the Bible this morning, above all things. And so, but um, all of you are near and dear to my heart as well. And so, uh, as, we, as we always have, we have um, carnations for all of you ladies here today. Whether you are a mom or not, we have a carnation for you. If the men do their jobs after church, you should get one. Okay, so... Uh, before you leave, they'll be out there in the foyer when you leave, and make sure you get your carnation. It's just something small on behalf of Wagontown Chapel that we are thinking and love each and every single one of you women, regardless of what your motherhood status is today. And so um, we thank you all for that as well. We're going to have you... Um, turn in your hymn books once again to page 451, 451. 
first, first and second verse. First and second verse. A Christian home. Follow along in your care and prayer this morning in your bulletin, and just wanted to give you a few updates here. Uh, Dave Berkheimer has his next surgery scheduled for May 25th, May 25th, so make sure you're thinking and praying for him. As he has that done, hopefully that will be a huge improvement. He'll be able to have more mobility, less pain in his neck as well. Um, another update here is um, John Schrack. Continue to be praying for him. I was uh, emailing Diane yesterday, and she said he's had some good days and bad days. Some days he's confused, and some days he's irritated. Um, but the other day, when she had written me yesterday, I think she had said that he has had a great day. He was talking clearer and doing a lot better. So. Um, I think he has one more treatment Tuesday for the radiation treatment, and then he's done. And so I, I don't know if some of this irritation and things like that have been side effects from the radiation. I'm not sure. But just pray that God would work continually in his, in his body, and particularly his brain and the tumor, that it would be that the radiation would do what it's supposed to do and shrink it, and, uh, and also that he'll be able to uh, talk better and clearer and not be able to sleep. I know sleeping was a big thing, or lack of sleep was a big thing as well, too. So keep them in your prayers. And an update on Zoltan. Uh, uh, Friday, I think it was, um, the uh, physical therapist d didn't catch him. He fell, and he's banged up pretty good. Uh, the ambulance came and took him today because he's been in a lot of pain, so they're going to take him to the hospital to check, see if he's broken anything. So pray for Zoltan. I was over there this past week. He looked great and doing well uh, as far as all that he's gone through and um, had a good time, spent about two hours with them uh, this past week, and it was a, a good time. But just pray. You know, this is just another thing that's on their plate, and, um, you know, Hopefully they'll be able to find whatever it is that's bothering him. I know before he fell, he's had tremendous pain in his left hip. And so when he had his stroke, he fell. 
And because of the stroke, that was the focus. They never even x-rayed his hip because the stroke was priority. And so he might have had a fracture in the hip and it healed wrong or whatever the case may be. So this might just speed up them finding out what's wrong and hopefully um, be able to address it and help him with the pain because the strength and the stroke results or symptoms, uh, not symptoms, but the, uh, uh, the effects of the stroke are enough to deal with, no less adding more pain to it. So pray for, pray for uh, he and, and Tracy. I know that uh, I can't imagine, you know, it's another thing on their plate. I know Tracy's been uh, struggling a lot. They're, none of them's getting any sleep and all of that. And so this is just one more thing. So just pray God would work in it and through it. And uh, so just pray for Zoltan. If they happen not to be there, when you, if you are doing a meal, uh, you can see me. I put the address on there, but they only live right down here on Red Mill Road. If you go down the street and you, and you see the field there, they're the, they're the first house past the field. It's a white house right on the left. And if you happen to be there and maybe you can just, even if they don't come to the door, put the food right at the door. And so that way they, you know, they at least have it. Somebody will probably be there. Um, but just um, in case they don't come to the door, I'd rather you leave it so they have something to eat than to not leave it. So, or you can bring it here and I can get it down there um, for you as well. But it's literally just right down the street here across from 340. Uh, so keeping them in your prayers as well as all the other ones that we have on here to, um, you know, not to take away anything from them it either. You know, those battling cancer and treatments and and, and surgery recoveries and, and, and all of that. And so uh, may we continue to be praying for each of them as well as the unspoken prayer requests you have on your own hearts and minds. Obviously our country, all that goes, all that's going on um, seems like there's something new every week. And uh, so may we continue to be praying for all that goes on as well as the upcoming elections that we'd be a part of that and praying for God to uh, put into to their who uh, he wants, he's going to, but um, that it would be a positive thing to which not a judge, judgment thing. So, uh, so let us pray and let's pause. Our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you today for, again, who you are. So we're going to look at even more today in, in the message, a great reminder today of a very familiar passage of Scripture but Lord, I pray today that you would help us to really understand who you are because it, it will help us in every aspect that we find ourselves, every, every area of life, every struggle, every defeat, every worry, every stress, every lonely period, our victories in life, even the great days, God. You are God alone and you don't change. And so help us to be fixed and focused on who you are. We think today of all the moms that are here today, those that are listening in or watching online, and we thank you and praise you for them. Lord, we thank you for, for raising them up. As the author of Proverbs 31 talked about the virtuous woman to whom, Lord, is living in a godly way that her children rise up and her husband praises her. I pray that each mom here today would be that woman and lord we thank you for working in each of their lives we thank you for all that they give lord and it's uh, we know it's lord we know why you created women to be moms and not men to be them lord we thank you for each mother's strength each mother's ability to stay awake when their child is awake and and lord run on fumes of sleep and on the list goes with that lord we praise you we know that their strength is ultimately from you and we praise you for each mom here today we think of those here today again that it is most difficult lord we know that there are moms here today that have lost loved ones lost children even most recently and this day uh, a heartache for them today and so, we, Lord, we think of them as, as only you can. I pray that you would meet the needs of their heart, that you would bring comfort and strength to, to their lives. For, 
for the ladies here today, Lord, who desire to be a mom. And yet, Lord, in your timing, you have not allowed that yet or may never allow that. But, Lord, uh, I pray that you would encourage them today, strengthen them today. May they see you, Lord, as, as one that can meet all their needs in you. We pray today for the hurting and the sick. We think of those to whom that are on our prayer list. We continue to pray for each and every single one. Lord, all those who are struggling through much, Lord, physically, emotionally, and mentally, Lord, those that are in the same physical condition, Lord, praying and seeking you, and Lord, and just the monotonous um, mindset, Lord, we pray that you would take that away. Encourage them today. We think of Zoltan right now as he's in Paoli or heading there. I pray that you would help the doctors to be able to figure out, may it be something that they can address and that in the long run it will, it will be a major help in um, taking away his pain. We pray for healing continually through his stroke. The same for John Schrack, Lord. We pray that the tumor would go, that you would remove it. Pray that it would shrink. We pray for all of these ones, Lord, those that have sh shoulder injuries and neck injuries and, and knee replacements and, and all of these things, Lord. You care and you know every single one. Father, we ask you to be with our nation, our country today. We pray for our world today. We pray for, for the sin that is rampant, the heartache that is real. Father, we pray that you would help each one. We know that you have a purpose and a plan to all of it. And Father, I pray that you would help us to trust you. Help us, Lord, when we don't understand, to rest in the hope of who you are. We pray, Lord, for um, the coming elections. We ask that you would raise up these men and women, Lord, to whom you would want to be there, Lord, ones that will bring change, ones that will be that which is pleasing in your sight. And Lord, we know that you can... And you do raise up those, Lord, who do right in your sight. And as we look at through the word, you have also, Lord, put into places and positions of those who did evil in your sight. And so, Father, may we trust you through it all. May we do our part. May we pray for our country, those in authority, our president, vice president, and each one today. We ask for all of these things, Lord, that our hearts would be tugged and and turned towards you. And if we have turned away from you, Lord, may we find ourselves to be revived once again and turn back to you. I pray these things all in your precious and holy name. Amen. If I can have those going to junior church, you can meet me down front. How are you all doing today? Good. That's a little loud. You can turn that down a little bit. Good? Great. Today is what? Mother's Day. Mother's Day. That is right. Today is Sunday too, right? But it is, it is Mother's Day. And that's what I want to just talk about just real quick. I want to challenge you. I want the Word of God to challenge you children today. Because it's important to understand that your mother is fantastic, Right? And you love her with all your heart. And that God gave you your mom just for you. Your mom is not a mom to nobody else except for you and your, and your, and your other siblings as well. And so your mom is just specifically created just for you and your brother or sister, depending on what you have. And that's a special thing. But I want to read you a verse. I want you to listen to this. Okay, You might not understand it, but I'm going to challenge you guys today. In the book of Proverbs, Solomon was one of the most wisest men. And he writes this in Proverbs 10, verse 1. He says, the proverb of Solomon, a wise son, or we could put there a daughter as well, maketh a glad father. So a wise son or daughter will make their dad glad. 
But then it says this, but a foolish son, and we'll add daughter or daughter, is heaviness to their mother. You don't want to be a burden to mom, do you? And neither do I. So God tells us that we shouldn't be foolish. That, and that's hard to do because we are professional sinners. We sin all the time and we are foolish every day. But I want to challenge you that you would think in such a way that you would think and know the Bible and know the God of the Bible because the more you follow the Bible, the less you will be foolish compared to what the Bible says and you won't bring heaviness to your mom. And there's other verses we read. We read through the Bible where it says, honor your father and your mother. And there is a, a blessing to that. You know what that blessing is if God chooses to do it? It says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on the earth. That when we praise our mom and our dad, for that matter, but if we honor and obey them, that one result of that or one reward of that is that God will give you longer life, which he already knows before he created you. And so today it's a challenge for <clears throat> me too, because I'm a son, and my mom's here, that I want to be a son that will bring her joy and not a foolish son, which will bring her heaviness. And I also want to honor her and, and thank her and praise her for the wonderful mom she is. And the greatest thing above all those things <clears throat> is not only who your mom is, <clears throat> but who made your mom who she is. God. So your greatest reflection of your mom ought to be God. And you ought to thank God for your mom. And he ought to get the praise today. So make sure you thank your mom for who she is, but make sure you thank God for making mom who she is. Because without God, your mom wouldn't be anywhere close to who she is. Okay? Praise mom and praise God above all things. You guys can go down to junior church. <clears throat>
beautiful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in this short time that we have here together, we pray that you be honored and glorified. Pray, Lord, that each one in here today, not just moms, but everyone in here today would know that this message applies to each of us, Lord. May no one tune out to what the word of God has to say today. And I pray these things in my own life as well. And Lord, may it be something that we leave here uh, being looked uh, to you more and grateful for who you are. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, today being uh, Mother's Day, we have a mixture of emotions, obviously, today. You have joy and you have happiness and others have sorrow and, and can't wait for tomorrow to come soon enough. And for all of us here today, I wanted to, uh, the Lord laid on this, this, this passage of scripture in my heart this week. And my hope has always been, every Sunday for that matter, regardless if it was a holiday or not, is that we would leave here uh, thinking and focusing on Jesus. That if I fail to give you Jesus... I fail. And so today is no different than that. Our text, though being today Mother's Day, will apply to everyone. So may you men in here and others who aren't moms not tune out because the application is so very real for you and I because I'm going to do my best to give you Jesus. You know, as I said, in, all of us in this room need this chapter today. In one way or another, we need to be reminded of this chapter. We're not going to look at the chapter in its entirety, but we will look at it in its majority as well. No matter where your heart is today, no matter where you are emotionally today, then may you allow God's word to speak to you. I want you to turn to the very familiar passage of Psalms 139. Today. Psalms 139. That I want to point out that I want to address moms today, but I also want to address everyone today, including Tim Grins. Psalms 139, I think, can hit every emotion today, whether this day is fantastic for you or whether this day is, is most heartbreaking for you. And not even talking just about moms and mom, uh, women that aren't moms, but also every situation in your life that you're dealing with today, the things that weigh on your heart, the things that are heavy to your mind, the things to which bring tears to your pillows, at night, even those things to which bring joy to your life, all of that addressed in this wonderful chapter of Psalms 139. Let me read, beginning in verse 1. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I get up, you understand my thoughts, even when they are far off. You can pass my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all of my ways. There's not even a word that's on my tongue, but Lord, you know it all together. You have beset me behind and before, and you've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high that I can't even begin to understand it all. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there, and if I make my bed in Sheol, or, or the grave, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and even the night shall be a light about me. Yea, even in the darkness hideth not from me. But night shineth as the day, the darkness as the light, and both of them are light to you. 
For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, that my soul knoweth them right well. My substance or my body was not hid from you when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes did see my substance being unformed, not fully created, being unperfect in thy book. And all my members were written, all my days are written in your book, which in continuance were fashioned when as they were yet none of them. And how precious are your thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them, that if I should count them, they are more than the sand. When I awake, I'm still with you. I want to stop there. That's where our, I have today. I know I don't have a whole lot of time, and I'm not going to go long. But I want us to grab just briefly just some things in here. Each of us in this room ought to know this chapter very well. It is probably one of the most familiar besides Psalms 23 of the book of Psalms. And it talks about God, and that's what I want to talk about today. Because God addresses the mom, God addresses the one that can't be a mom, God addresses the husband and the father and the son and the daughter. God, God addresses the brokenhearted, God addresses the joyful, God addresses those that have shattered dreams to which he has greater ones for you. And so we see a few major things here. Much of this to be reminders for us today. But in verse 1 it says, Thou hast searched me, and you know me. That we are known by God. There is not a person in this room, whether listening online or in this entire world right now, that God does not know. So he knows the motherhood. He knows what all comes with that. He knows the sacrifice. He knows the late nights. He knows the diaper changes. He knows the worries. He knows all of those from motherhood. But he also knows not being able to pay the bill, the stress of a doctor's appointment, the loss of a loved one. He knows you. And he knows all about you. We know that this is talking about one of the attributes of God, that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. So whether you are a mother here today or you're just a person who's not a mom today, he knows all about you and he knows the burdens and the weights to which you carry. He knows your greatest defeats and your victories. And that's where I want our minds to be at today. Because it applies to everybody here today. It applies to motherhood, but it applies to every other category of human being. He knows you. You think about that. That God knows you. Because the world will teach you different. The world will say, he's the man upstairs. He's the one that is far away from us. He is so Busy with everything else in the world, making sure that planets don't run into us and stars don't destroy us. And, and he's worried about all these other things. And how could that God, that grand, great God, even know who I am? But David says right in the very first verse, he has already searched you and he knows you. Verse 2 says he, he knows when you're getting sitting down and he knows when you're getting up or when you lie down and when you wake up he understands all of your thoughts even when the, when he says that he knows them from afar off he's saying that he knows them even before they even come into your mind for your mothers today he knows those sleepless nights whether it's changing diapers or maybe it's worrying about a son who, or a daughter who's learning to drive. 
Or maybe it's about a child who's an adult now and they're not in your home anymore and you still worry about them, do you not? When he knows that when you go to sleep and when you rise up, he knows those sleepless nights. He knows the calming of a crying child or not being able to sleep because of cancer on your mind or the pain of a loved one who's just passed or maybe passed a long time ago. He knows the sleepless nights of how you're going to pay the bills that are due. Whatever it is that God knows all about you and what's on your mind, whether you go to bed or whether you're asleep or whether you are wide awake. Let me point you to God a little bit more in Psalms 121, verses 3 and 4, speaking about God. He says, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber, or he doesn't sleep. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall never slumber or sleep. So on those restless nights of motherhood or those restless nights of just humanity, guess who you can run to? The one who never tires, the one who never sleeps, and the one that knows what you're going through. He's already up. But not only does he know those sleepless nights, it says when, he, when I get up, he knows, my, he knows when I get up, he knows my day. So he knows what's happening in this moment right now in your life. He knows your, he knows your thoughts even before they come into your mind. He knows what's on your mind, not only when it's on your mind at night when you can't sleep, but also what's on your mind that is bothering you through your day. You know, for mothers who, who are having little children and, and babies and the diaper changes and all of that and then making sure that the house is picked up and, and, and meal is on the table, he understands and he knows the ongoingness of busy lives. For the sake of an innocent life who can't do anything on their own. And he knows all of those things. He knows the one here today or listening in who has lost a child. Whether it be after birth or before. He knows every miscarriage. He knows your desires. He knows your brokenness. He knows you. You know, Exodus 33, verse 12, and God's speaking to Moses, and he, he tells Moses something. This is right after, if you know Exodus 33, just to give it context here. Israel being Israel, as you and I are professional sinners, just like they are. Not listening to God, not caring about God, and God was so bothered by it and so upset about it that his presence would leave. He would no longer have a fire of a, a pillar of fire by day and a cloud by, or by night and a cloud by day. The presence of God had lifted. And so Exodus 33 is, is Moses going before God. And Moses leaves the camp of Israel. And he goes and sets camp outside of the camp of Israel. Because he alone wants to go before the holy God. And say, God, for your name's sake, we are your people. And we can't do anything without you. For your name's sake, will you come back? And God does return his presence to Israel. And so then God says this to Moses in that text. And the Lord said to him, I will do this thing 
also that thou hast spoken of. For you have found grace in my sight. Again, what's grace? Getting what you don't deserve. Then he says this, and I know you by name. I know you by name. Of course, Moses knows that. Moses has already been talking with God. He's already been leading Israel through the prom or through the through the wilderness. Why would God say, "In Moses, I know your name"? Because he wants Moses to know that not only does he know his name, but that he is special enough to even know his name to God. You know, we buy these name tags at stores and we put them on and we go to these conferences or whatever you do and you say, hello, my name is Tim Kranz. So when somebody comes up to you, they can say, hi, Tim. God needs no name tag for us. He knows you. And he tells us in the rest of this text of why he knows you. He knows so much more about you. In fact, David can't even fathom how much he knows. And so that's why David says, you know, God, not only do you know my thoughts, but you even know what I want to say even before I say it in verse 4. And then, and God, you're in front of me and you're back of me and you are all around me. There is no place that I can go that you aren't. And then he says this in verse 6. Knowing these things, it is wonderful to me. In fact, it is so wonderful. Beyond my understanding, I can't even comprehend how awesome a God you are, that you know me. Then he gets not only to the omniscience of God, he breaks down the omnipresence of God, which is that God is everywhere. And so David says, There's no place I can go from your spirit. No place I can go from you, God. I can't flee from your presence. I have two written examples in my Bible. I have Jonah, which we well know. And I have Adam, who tried to hide from God after he sinned. And there's no place you and I can go that God isn't there. And I'm going to say not only physically, I'm going to say mentally. Because as you read these descriptions to which David writes, he's writing these extreme things. He says there in verses 8, if I ascend to heaven, you know, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, behold, you are there. And if I would take the rays of the morning, the sun rays of the morning, and let them carry me wherever they go, you are there. And even if I go to the depths of the sea, to the deepest part of the ocean, you are there. And I don't think David is just talking here about physical location. But he's talking also, I believe, that you, you know, when you and I are mentally in a state of some place that we feel like we're so lonely, we feel like nobody understands, we feel like, you know, does anybody know what I'm dealing with and going through when we are at a mental state of being in a place that we feel like no one else is there, that we have taken our mindset to a place that is out of this world. When you have those sleepless nights, and even when you are mentally at a place where you feel like nobody else knows, guess who's there? God is. And why I have to wrap up verses 13 and on Of course, he mentions darkness. Man thinks he can hide in the dark. But darkness to the Lord is light, for we know and in him is no darkness at all. 
But why is this all important for us to understand? Why is God the way he is? Verse 13 and 14 and 15. These are hot topic verses right now. For God, you have possessed my reins and you have covered me in my mother's womb. And I'm going to praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And my soul knows them right well. My substance or my, my body was not hid from you. Even before I was even beginning to form and fashion in my mother's womb, you already had known me. It was not a secret. Those things that are made in secret. You saw my substance in verse 16. Yet being unperfect, or that word there mean, even before you were beginning to come together, even before conception, he knew you. And his eyes were already on you. And he says, you already knew my days, all my members in verse 16 were already written. That means God already had a purpose and a plan for your life, even before he created you. This is why God is who he is. Number one, it's his very nature, but he is the creator, the former of you and I. Even before we're created. God already knew you and I even before our parents met each other. And not only that, we read in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, speaking before he even created the world, he chose you in him. So it's not only did God know you before, it wasn't like he started thinking of you like a week or two before you were beginning to, uh, at conception, or a year before, or, or two years before. Before the foundation of the world, before creation, he knew you. And he already had your days planned out. And he already had his will for your life planned out. It's no wonder David, by this point, writes verses 17 and 18. God, how, how precious are your thoughts towards me. That you think of me. David also would write in another psalm, who is man? That you are even mindful of him. But David here says, God, your thoughts about me are so precious that I can't even begin to fathom, to count them. They are, they are more than any sand, a grain of sand all over the world. And when I'm awake, guess who's still there? You know, for moms today, those unappreciative, or not unappreciative, un, uh, those that feel like they're not appreciated, and we as husbands often do that. You are appreciated. God knows you. He's called you by name, and he's called you to be the mother that you are. And for everybody else in this room, the same is true too. You feel as if you're the only one going through what you're going through? You feel like you're in some mental distant land in your mind? That life right now is not real? He knows you. He's already there. He's already gone on before you. 
He's already has ordered and ordained before the foundation of the world your purpose in life and what he has called you to do. And his will is right. And God does all things good. We also can read this text in a different light. And I would be not doing justice if I didn't mention it. As sinners, where can we go from the presence of God? Nowhere. Is there any sin that we can hide from God? No. We can't. We are professional sinners, and it's only by the grace of God that he looks on you and I, and his thoughts are precious. David didn't say, your thoughts are deserved of me. He says they are precious of me. It is only by grace that we are saved through faith. And so today, God knows, yes, every hurt, every pain, but God also knows every sin that separates and besets you and I on a daily basis. And so what should it bring us to? The same place where it brought David. I praise you. Number one, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You formed and fashioned me. You knew me. Even before I was created. You know me. And you know my sin. And you still love me because of what you have done for me on the cross. And today, I pray that you would understand all to who God is. And we can't wrap our mind around it, even as David said. These things are so great beyond my understanding. He said in Psalms 139, I can't even fathom it. So today, we thank you for moms. We thank moms today. We praise you for all that you do. Thank you for all the sleepless nights, all the things to which you continue to do, even as having adult children and grandchildren, being Grammys and Pa's and Pop-Ops and Mom-Moms and Grandma and granddad and all the other things, Mimi's and all of the other names that you're all given. That he knows your name. He knows who you are because he's formed and fashioned you. And there's only one thing to do. Praise him. May you and I praise God today. For his mercy and his grace that has called us to be followers of him as dear children that gave his life for us so that we would have purpose and hope so that he that we would know that he is there on those sleepless nights that he is there on those distant thoughts and that the response that God has for you the believer thoughts are precious that you can't even begin to count May we leave here today, yes, thinking of moms, but more importantly, thinking of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. God, I know, and everybody in this room knows, there is so much more in that text. So much more about you. God, I am grateful for all that you know of me. And God, the more I know you, the more I understand who I am. And I know that I am, as I continue to say every Sunday, I'm a professional sinner and I am in need of you every single day. And the more that I know of you and I understand of me, the more that I am amazed by your grace and your mercy in my own life. For I am undeserving in any of those capacities. 
I'm not deserving for you to be everywhere that I am. I'm not deserving of you to know my heart and my brokenness and my, and my tears and my passions and my desires. And I don't, I don't deserve any of those things. God, I don't even deserve to have any thought of me by you. Who is Tim Kranz that you even have one sand speck of a thought about me that's precious? Lord, it has nothing to do with me, but it has everything in all things to do with you. It shows us today how great of a God you are, that we can do nothing to deserve your love towards us. We have done nothing to deserve your forgiveness, your mercy, or your grace, or your any other attribute that you have given it willingly because you have been our substitute, are our substitute. And that today, faith alone in what you have done on the cross and the empty tomb being empty because you live, that I realize my brokenness and my sin and that I must repent of my own sin before you, the holy God, It's amazing, Lord, that even you would die for me. But your word says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I pray today for each mom, each husband, each child, each little one forming even now in some wounds and some that you know will be forming in the years to come that each one would know who you ultimately are, that you're the God that knows them, who has called them, who has loved them. And by your grace alone, each one can know you as Lord and Savior. I thank you for it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Would you please stand as we close with hymn 139, Great is Thy Faithfulness. all women don't forget to grab your flower hope the men have them ready out there don't forget to grab that heavenly father i pray today that you would work in our lives lord i pray for those that are hurting today especially those that have lost loved ones lord we think of each one the urbine family and others lord i pray you'd meet the needs of their life remind them that you know them and lord that they desire to know you in return i pray these things lord today Thank you for all moms. Bring us back safely on Wednesday night for a time of prayer and study, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.